but a black call is the base call. So we always count, and this, this is true of every single slide I'm going to show moving forward on this, okay? But basically, um, we always count from the outside in. That's just like receivers, or that's how we would do our uh, that's how we would do our kick return unit or our kickoff unit as well. So we keep this consistent. Over here on the left side, they will always block two, three, and four. So our left bullet is always going to block number two. Our left tackle will always block number three, and our left guard will always block number four. That is a constant. Okay. Again, we are not asking our players to remember different things. So for example. On a black call, the left bullet blocks number two. If we were to make a white call, he doesn't magically block someone else. That doesn't keep it simple for him, okay? That that makes gives him more stuff to remember, and that wasn't our goal, right? We wanted to have one thing that was pretty simple that we could get good at, all right? And I think we've gotten pretty good at it where I've been, and I'll show you some stats on that. So on a black call, the left side, they're going to block two, three, four. On the right side, they're going to block one, two, three. So yes, that is different, but it doesn't change for them, okay? As long as you introduce it that way, it doesn't change for those people at least, okay? Then our shield has everyone left that's remaining. So it's typically going to be three guys, especially in a 10-up look. So our right shield, he's going to block number four. Our left shield and our middle shield, they're going to block number five, okay? On black... We have nine dudes, because our snapper isn't blocking. We've got nine dudes, six guys on the line of scrimmage, and three guys in the shield. We have nine guys to block ten. So somebody is left unblocked. If you have a right-footed punter, which we've always had, right? You could change this if you had a left-footed punter. But we know a right-footed punter is going to angle a little bit to where that, that number one on his backside that is going to be the guy that we're going to leave unblocked because he has the farthest to go. We obviously wouldn't want to leave the guy to his kick side unblocked because he has the shortest route. So does this work? You're like, Coach, man, um, this, is, this is pretty simple, Coach. I don't know about this. So this is a slide that I added. This would not be in our normal playbook. The other stuff that I just went through, the black and the white call, are taken directly from our playbook. You're saying, Coach, this is, this is so simple. I don't know here. Does it work? Well, here's some numbers for it, okay? These are the most recent numbers I have. I, I sadly don't have uh, any 2015 St. Ambrose film. That's when I was the special teams coordinator there, and I reached out to their coach, and that film's been gone for a long time. But I do have access to 2019 when I was coordinating at uh, Lincoln Way Central. And in 2019, we punted 32 times, okay? 11 of those times, we downed the football. That's pretty impressive. We're already at a third of the times, okay, they didn't even get a fair catch in. So a third of the times we downed the ball because of some of the things I'm about to talk about. Um, well, number one, as a review, we kept it simple. Uh, we didn't have guys sitting around thinking, right, or we didn't have guys waiting till the thud of the football to run down the field. Uh, what are other reasons why we had good coverage? Because we used athletes. Again, we weren't running a bunch of offensive linemen out there, okay? But I'm going to talk uh, uh, here in a slide or two about reading the intent of the rusher, and that's really where we really gained an advantage. But of those 32 kicks, 11 times, we were the team that downed the football, and four of those were within the negative three. 